Welcome to the first video on how to read written music. And uh, let me start by saying that written music mainly illustrates two big ideas. Uh, the first big idea is pitch, and that has to do with what kind of sound you're going to make. And the second big idea is rhythm. And rhythm has to do uh, with when you're going to make your sounds. But we're not going to worry about rhythm today. We'll break that down in later videos. Today we're just going to worry about pitch, how composers communicate what kind of sounds they want to hear. Um, so let's go with this here. Most sounds are illustrated or indicated or shown by these things called notes. And notes come in lots of different shapes and variety, but almost all notes have this thing in common, this little oval shape here. And some notes look a little bit different, like they can be empty in the middle. The note on the right is filled in, but the note on the left is just an outline. And some notes can have stems connected to them, or be filled in and have a stem, or have a dot, or two notes could be connected together at the top, or they could have a flag or a couple of flags, but let's just focus on this one single note head, because it's the note head itself that communicates this idea of pitch. And let's take this note here, and let's just say, you know, for argument's sake, that this note is, sounds like this. Okay? Now, um, that's one sound, and it has that pitch, and it, you know, it sounds like that, it's, that's the pitch. But if we were to want a different pitch, let's bring in a, a second pitch here. Um, notice how that one is, is pretty similar to the first one, but it's a little bit higher. So the pitch is actually going to say, or it's going to sound, how we would say, a little bit higher. Um, so it sounds like this. So the first pitch, again, the pitch on the left sounds like this. And the pitch on the right, which is a little bit higher on your screen, sounds a little bit higher. Okay? Now let's bring in a third pitch here. This is going to sound even higher than the first two. Okay? And a fourth pitch. And a fifth. And notice how as the notes go higher, the pitches also get higher. Okay, so if you look from left to right, and that's normally how we read music, from left to right, each successive pitch, each next note, gets higher in pitch to our ears. So if we were to play all of these notes from left to right, it would sound like this. The very first note, second note, third note, fourth note, fifth note, sixth note, the seventh note, and the highest note. Okay? So, the, those are notes, but, um, and that's, you know, it's in a nice, neat little line like that, but a lot of times music is not written in nice little lines. It's, uh, it sort of jumps around all over the place, and it makes it a little bit harder to understand the relationships of notes to each other. So, you know, one way we could do it is we could have everything be in a nice little line, but that'd be pretty boring music if, if it all went in a line like that. So, we're just going to bring in some, some guidelines here. Um, well, actually, we're going to bring in these lines. Uh, and these lines are, are pretty important to reading pitches in music. In fact, let's, let's break it down a little further. These lines are called the staff. We refer to that as a staff. And the staff is simply five lines. One, two, three, four, five. And we count them that way from bottom to top, just like climbing a ladder. And let's put the numbers over there on the left there. One, two, three, four, five, from bottom to top. And that's all a staff is. Well, uh, not exactly. There are spaces in between those lines. So there are the lines, and in between the lines, there are spaces. Well, those spaces are numbered too. We have to use the spaces. And the lines and spaces are important to notice because notes can be written on a line, or they can be written on a space. And it's usually, well, it's always one or the other. Um, uh, uh, notes aren't written on either, um, and they have to be one or the other. They can't be written on both. So notes are either on lines or spaces. The note on the left is clearly on the line, and the note on the right is clearly on the space. Okay, now, um, here are all the, the notes on the staff, uh, lines and spaces. So when notes are on the staff, these are the places they can go. 
So the very first note's on the line, the second one's on the space, the third one's on the line, the fourth one's on the space, so on and so forth. And remember, we're reading these notes from left to right. And if you'll notice from left to right, the pitches go up. They are ascending and they are alternating lines and spaces. So what do we call these notes? Well, um, we give them letter names, actually. Um, the notes on the staff are called A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And you'll notice that's just seven letters, and that's all we use of the alphabet. We don't use H, we don't use I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. We don't use any of the other letters in the alphabet, just the first seven. And I know some of you who have seen a piano before are thinking, whoa, wait a minute, a piano's got a lot of keys. It's got like 88 keys. Well, what are the other 81 keys called if we're just going to use these first seven letters? Well, it's actually pretty simple. It's like a cycle. After the letter G, we repeat the letters again, and we get A, B, C, D. And it just keeps going and going, so on and so forth, in that, um, in that pattern. So the first seven letters just repeated over and over again, a seven-letter cycle. Okay? So, um, now where do those letter names go on the staff? Well, um, hmm. they can go pretty much anywhere they want to. Uh, there's only one rule, and the rule is about the relationships of the notes to each other. So, like, A isn't always going to be in the same spot but it will always be the same distance from B. So here's the rule. The rule is if the notes go up on the staff and alternate lines and spaces, then they are labeled in alphabetical order. Pretty simple, let me show you how it works. Let's just say for instance, for example, that the A is on the bottom line. Well, if the A is on the bottom line, then where is the B? Well, our rule says if the notes go up, so it's got to be higher than A, and they have to alternate lines and spaces. In this example, A is on the line, so B would need to be on the next space. And if B is on that bottom space, then where's the C? Well, that's the next letter in the alphabet, so it needs to go up and it needs to alternate. So if B is on a space, then C has to be on the line. right? So on and so forth. If C is on the line, D is on the space. If D is on that space, then E is on the line above it. F is on the space above that. G is on the line above that. All right? And like I said earlier, we've got to the end of our musical alphabet. What comes after G? Well, if G is on that line, then A would be on the space above G, and B would be on the line above that. Okay? So now, this we have our alphabetical relationship here. But let's say, um, that's a, an unusual example. A is rarely on that bottom line. In fact, a really common one is uh, for E to be on the bottom line. Well, our relationship is still the same. All right, E goes on the bottom line, so the space above that has to be the F. The line above that has to be G, and in music, after G comes A on the space, B on the line, C on the space, and D on the line. So then the space above D would be E, and then the line above E would be F. And that's a really common arrangement of those letters, but um, like I said, it's not always the arrangement of those letters. The relationships are the same, but E isn't always on the bottom line. Sometimes G is on the bottom line. So if G's on the bottom line, then after G comes A in the alphabet, and then B on the line, C on the space, D on the line, E on the space, F on the line, G on the space, and A on the line. Makes sense, right? It's pretty straightforward. Well, let's try this. Okay. What if that note right there on the bottom line is an F? Well, if that note is an F, then we should be able to use our alphabet to figure out that note right there that's not right next to F. And this is normally what happens in music. Not, not always is music, um, you know, follow the alphabetical order because sometimes notes don't like to be right next to each other. They like to be further away. So this note's a little bit further away. The second note here is further away than a line and a space. It doesn't alternate. In fact, we've got to pass through some lines and spaces to get to that second note. So we just visualize. If we know that the first note is F, 
then we know, oh, in our rule, remember our rule, if the notes go up on the staff and alternate lines and spaces, then they are labeled in alphabetical order. Okay, so going up, this second note is higher than the F, so we just need to use our alphabet and remember to alternate lines and spaces. So, if that first note is F, the second note is going to be a G on the space, and then an A on the line, because A comes after G in the alphabet, and then on the space, the next space is B, so that makes this last note here, this note that we're trying to figure out, has to be the next note, or the next letter in the alphabet, which would be C. So if that bottom line is F, then that third line is C. And we used our alphabet to get there.